Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Let's learn about pronouns. Previously, we have uh, talked about the noun classification, and we had divided the nouns into four different categories. Proper noun versus common nouns. Gandhi versus leader, for example. And concrete versus abstract nouns. Single word nouns versus compound nouns. Collective nouns. Today, inshallah, we'll talk about pronouns. Pronouns are words that replace nouns, groups of nouns or other pronouns, as you probably already know. The word uh, or words that they replace uh, is called the antecedent. So the words that's replaced, uh, get kicked out by the pronouns or speaker, uh, is, is called the antecedent. Okay? Those are the replaced words. Pronouns agree in number, gender, and person with the antecedent. In the, for example, in this here, Lincoln gave his famous Gettysburg Address in 1863. You wouldn't say Lincoln gave her or their famous Gettysburg. So they have, obviously, the pronoun has to agree with uh, the antecedent in these aspects. There are only eight pronoun types. And to make it easy for us to go through, I have uh, listed them over here. We'll start here at 1 o'clock, and then 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock, and go, go like this way. So the first type of pronoun is personal pronouns. These are the most common types of uh, uh, pronouns uh, that we're familiar with. And then there's a subjective versus objective pronouns, possessive pronouns, reflexive and intensive pronouns, uh, a demonstrative pronouns, interrogative pronouns, relative pronouns, and indefinite pronouns. Only eight, no, no worries, you can do this in show. So to start out with the personal pronouns, the most common familiar ones probably. So personal pronouns are the usual sus substitutes for nouns of people or things. For example, I, you, he, she, it, we, they. So, for example, if somebody asked, who ordered this personal pan pizza? Personal pronoun, personal pan pizza. This is an example I found uh, somebody given the internet. In fact, uh, so who ordered this personal pan pizza? Somebody might say, I did, you did, he did, she did, we did, or we did, or they did. So these are all personal pronouns. They replace some specific individual um, uh, who had ordered, or, or individual, or individuals who had ordered this pizza. So this is the first category of pronouns, uh, the personal pronouns. Okay? So that, that's it. We're done with the first category, personal pronouns. I, you, they, we, they. The second category is, is subject versus object pronouns. So personal pronouns can be subject pronouns or objects. So these are derived from here. They can be used as subject or pronouns or object pronouns. So they're not a mutually exclusive category. This is a, this is kind of like a functional description uh, of a pronoun. You know, a car is a vehicle. A car can be used to go to work. It can be used to transport uh, uh, cargo, etc. It's, it's functional. So what job does the pronoun do? Does it function to replace the subject, or does it function to replace the object of the sentence? To appreciate that, of course, we have to know the difference between subject versus object of a sentence. And you probably can teach me a few things about this. Uh, subject is like in this case, like fa'il, and uh, uh, object is like mafolbi in Arabic. So David killed Goliath, Dawud uh, Sam killed Goliath. So this is the subject of the sentence, and that's the object of the sentence, the doer and the one that's done upon fa'il and mafolbi. So David is the subject, and Goliath is the object of this sentence. And um, if you were to replace the subject with the pronoun, that, that pronoun would be called the subject pronoun. If you were to replace the object with the pronoun, that pronoun would be called the object pronoun. For example, here, he killed Goliath. So this he is called a subject pronoun. It's replacing the subject of the sentence. David killed him, this would be the object pronoun. The, uh, this pronoun is 
that is replacing the object of a sentence. The subject pronoun replaces the subject, and an object pronoun replaces the object of a sentence. That's it. So two down, six to go. The personal pronouns, who ordered this personal pan pizza? Subject versus object pronouns, the one the pronouns that replaces subject versus the object. Third type of pronouns is called possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns um, uh, is a personal pronoun, uh, again, that is used to show ownership or relationship. Here you don't use an apostrophe. Uh, I'll explain that to you in a second. It's used to show ownership or relationship. For example, you would say, this mushaf is mine. Right? This is a possessive pronoun. It's showing possessions. You say, uh, uh, this, this mushaf is mine. Now, you appreciate a slight difference, okay? But this sense is, this is my mushaf. Say, like, this is his mushaf, this is their mushaf, this is, you know, this is a different type. And this is my mushaf, check it out, type of thing. Right? That's a different, slightly different emphasis from this statement, this is my mushaf, versus this mushaf is mine. Right? Sorry. Like, this mushaf is mine. Like, don't touch it. Type of thing. No, you wouldn't do that. But right? I'm just saying, this mushaf is mine. This is a possessive, it shows possession of. Uh, 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 of the must have to this pronoun here. So that's a possessive pronoun. Now this example, this is my must have, this is also a, a bit of a possession type thing. Uh, the art, the, uh, your textbook does not distinguish between these two uses of this pronoun. Uh, but this is a possessive pronoun. This is a um, Adjective pronoun. It's describing the musaf. It's describing that the musaf belongs to him. It comes before the noun. So this is an adjective pronoun. You can also call it as a, the book doesn't make a distinction. As I said, this could be a possessive pronoun too, uh, but it's a special possessive pronoun. It's an adjective pronoun. So this musaf is mine. as a possessive pronoun. This is my musaf. This is an adjective pronoun or a special form, I guess, of a possessive pronoun. That's number three. Now look again. In possessive pronouns, no apostrophe is used. For example, this book is hers. You don't say H-E-R's apostrophe S. That would be hers is. Her is. That's wrong. This book is hers. No apostrophe in possessive pronoun. Now this is possessive adjective or uh, um, um, uh, adjective pronoun. This is her book. Okay. Adjective pronouns comes before the noun. Possessive pronouns come afterwards okay so this is to distinguish between the two again so possessive pronouns not followed by a noun so this house is tom's okay, this can be rewritten as this house is his this is a possessive pronoun is his whose car is this it's mine possessive pronoun this is her idea this idea is hers Possessive pronoun after comes after uh, the noun. C compare that to adjective pronouns uh, which uh, precede the noun. Uh, it is Tom's house. Capitalize, I'm assuming. It is Tom's house. Uh, it is his house. Adjective pronoun. House, adjective pronoun. Uh, uh, noun, adjective pronoun. This is Susan's car. This is her car. Adjective pronoun. These are my parents' keys. These are their keys. Adjective. So adjective pronouns uh, uh, show possession also, but they come before the noun. And possessive pronouns also show possession, and they come after the noun. That's three. So we talked about personal pronouns, subject versus object pronouns, and we talked about possessive pronouns. This is this must have is mine, for example. Now we're going to talk about reflexive. And intensive pronouns. The word reflexive, as, as you can imagine, means to reflect on itself. So reflexive pronouns reflect back to another noun or pronoun. They refer to the same same noun or pronoun and show that the same person is involved. So in other words, they say that you're still talking about the same person. Okay? Uh, subject and object of the sentence are the same. So reflexive, kind of like a mirror, uh, pronouns refer back to the same. Now, this will become evident in a second. 
both reflexive and intensive pronoun end in self or selves. Self or selves. For example, example reflexive pronoun. I did the homework myself. Right? So I and myself. They're both referring to the same person, right? They refer back to the same as that you're talking about the same thing. So this is a reflexive pronoun. I did the homework myself. Reflexive pronoun. Honestly. Like, yeah. Right. So I did the homework myself. So this is an example of a reflexive pronoun. Referring back to the same person that's involved. He bought himself a cup of coffee. He bought himself. He didn't buy somebody else. He bought himself a cup of coffee. So reflexive pronoun. These are both examples of reflexive pronouns. I blame myself. It's another example of reflexive pronoun. So subject is I myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. These are all reflexive uh, uh, pronouns from the subject. Now look at this. It's slightly different. Intensive pronoun. These also end in self or selves. Okay. But they have a slightly different uh, connotation. Intensive pronoun add an emphasis, in, increase the intensity of the statement, so to speak. For example, I myself am to blame. I myself am to blame. This is basically an emphasis that I did this, this, I'm the only person to blame. I myself am to blame. He himself paid for the damages, right? So you could exclude the words himself from this uh, and myself. You could take those out. The sentence would still make sense. He, uh, I am to blame, right? I am to blame, or I myself am to blame. It's just to him. I'm the only person to blame, nobody else. It's just add his emphasis. He paid for the damages versus he himself paid for the damages. So these are intensive pronouns. So they add emphasis, like they point to the person. So personal pronouns, subject versus object pronouns, possessive pronouns. Reflexive and intensive pronouns, and we're going to talk about the demonstrative pronouns. These are easy ones. These are a smell ishara, right? Has a how would I it? and etc. So these are demonstrative pronouns. These point out a specific person, place, or thing. This apple. Uh, this is an apple. That is an apple. These are apple. Those are apples. I'd say these are only four here. So no, this and that. These and those. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. It rhymes with that. This and that, these and those. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. So this, that, these, those. The demonstrative pronoun. A smell, a shot, a pointing pronoun. That's it. That's that. So we talked about personal pronouns, subject versus object pronoun, possessive pronouns, reflexive and intensive pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, and now another easy category, interrogative pronouns. These are question pronouns. Used to form questions or, or exclamations. So these are uh, like uh, who, whom, which, what, who are you, or uh, exclamation statements. Say, what a day, or who did this. So these are all interrogative uh, pronouns who, whom, which, what. Now, last two categories are a little, uh, perhaps a little trickier, but not that difficult to show. Now, the relative pronouns are used, uh, used to join together groups of words or to introduce what's called a relative clause. Relative clause is giving a little more information about the, uh, the subject of, uh, of the sentence. So the relative pronouns are these. Who, that, which, whose, when, sorry, when, uh, where, and whom. So these, these are relative pronouns. They are used to... Uh, Add some information about the subject. For example, the boy who stole the bike is at the door. So if you had just said the boy is at the door, that would have made sense. But uh, who, which boy is it really? Is it the boy from next door? Is the boy uh, that uh, that did the yard work uh, and who wants his pay, or the boy who stole the bike? Right. So this is a relative clause. So relative pronouns introduce relative clauses. So these are the relative pronouns who. That, which, whose, when, where, whom. Some examples of uh, pronouns that I found. I told you about the woman who lives next door. 
So that's the introducing a, a, a relative class. I told you about the woman who lives next door. Do you see the cat which is lying on the roof? The cat. Do you see the cat? Which cat? Which is lying on the on the roof? He couldn't read, which surprised me. Do you know the boy whose mother is a nurse? Do you know the boy whose mother is a nurse? I was invited by the professor whom I met at the conference. I was invited by the professor whom I met at the conference. I don't like the table that stands in the kitchen. I don't like the table that stands in the kitchen. It's describing it. These are relative pronouns. Okay? So personal pronouns, subject versus object pronouns, possessive pronouns, relative and intensive pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, interrogative pronouns, relative pronouns, and last and uh, not the least, but if that's true for that doubt, an indefinite pronoun. Indefinite pronouns refer to things that nouns uh, uh, or other pronouns, but in a non-specific way without giving their number. Uh, so if refer to non-specific person or thing, their number and amount is not known, for example. So these are some uh, indefinite pronouns. Another, everybody, no one, anybody, everybody, nothing, any, anyone, everyone, uh, everything, one, anything, much, somebody, each, neither, someone, either, nobody, some, uh, something. These are all singular. In other words, even though they refer to groups, the word, they are, uh, as, are used as singular. So everything else has to be singular, so to speak, in the sentence too, to go with this. These are, these are the only five plural indefinite pronouns. Both, few, many, others, and several. One, two, three, four. These are the only five plural uh, indefinite pronouns. These, all, any, most, none, sometimes singular and sometimes plural. We'll elaborate on this in just a second once we understand what indefinite pronouns really means. For example, a mother walks into the into a room and she sees this, a big mess. So who made this mess? She's very upset. And uh, uh, there's flour all over uh, Ata, all over the place. It's like, what happened here? So the little child comes and says, oh, nobody, mommy, somebody, oh, no one, anyone, everybody, mommy. So he really definitely knows his indefinite pronouns. So that's indefinite pronouns, like uh, the uh, who, uh, the, uh, the who, who the exact per, uh, in person, individual, is not uh, quite known. Somebody did it, mommy. Now, indefinite pronouns uh, ref, uh, refer to non-specific person, place, or thing, and, and the number or amount is not known. So, and as I said, there are singular and plural versions of these. So these are singular, and it was any time you use these, you have to make sure that you use them as singular words. For example. It is incorrect to say everybody, which is a singular indefinite pronoun. It is incorrect to say everybody brought their lunch. Everybody brought their lunch. That's incorrect. But the correct way of saying that everybody brought his or her lunch. See? Brought his or her lunch. It's incorrect to say nobody did their homework because this is plural. Nobody is a, uh, nobody is a singular indefinite pronoun. So, so it's incorrect to say nobody did their homework today. But correct, uh, but correct uh, way of saying that is Nobody did his homework today. Again, it's incorrect to say someone left their books here. But the correct way of saying that is someone left his books here. Uh, now, these are plural. For, now, these would be plural. For example, both of them brought their lunches. Also correct, several, which is also plural form, several students were late today. Several students were late today. So these are indefinite pronouns. And that's it. That's the eight types of uh, pronouns, personal pronouns, subject versus object pronouns, possessive pronouns, reflexive and intensive pronouns, uh, demonstrative pronouns, interrogative uh, pronouns, uh, rel relative pronouns, the boy whose bicycle was stolen, uh, and uh, indefinite pronouns, someone made a big mess. And alhamdulillah, that's, the, uh, that's all the pronouns there is, inshallah. Uh, until next time then, as-salatu wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.